Just like, just like to say a few words. <laughs> first of all, first of all, okay. The night is ours, but we want to congratulate our opponent for running a clean campaign and a tough campaign and we congratulate him. It's not easy to lose, but he deserves credit for running a damn good campaign. I think what we can say tonight is that we have won an incredible victory. Not only, not, not only have we retained the mayor's seat, we have won in Ward 1, One in Ward 2, one in Ward... Okay, Terry, come here. All right, come here. Terry Barishas. Is Sharon Boucher here? Sharon here yet? Is Tom Smith here yet? Yeah. yeah Tom! Tom Smith. <laughs> Tom, get up here. And from what I heard on the radio, we are still alive in Ward 5. Hey. Is, is Mary Bentley here? Mary Bentley here? So what we have done is won three automatic seats, and we have a shot at a fourth. And furthermore, furthermore, from what I can understand, we have won every one of the initiatives that were on the ballot. And if, that's, if that is in fact the case, and we haven't seen the final results, among other things, what that does mean, after years and years of discussion, we are going to get the people-oriented waterfront that we have fought for. Okay. The last point that I want to make is this, that tonight's victory clearly would not have been, not have been possible without the work of an enormous number of people. There's no question about it. We have never had, never had, as good a volunteer and grassroots effort as we have had in this campaign. And there are hundreds of people that we could bring forward right now, but I want to bring at least two people forward. Jim Schumacher. And every time you called the office, whether it was early in the morning or late at night, Rachel Levin was there. Yeah. Rachel. Yeah. Okay, what we have done tonight, let's take stock of it. What we have done tonight really is a credit to all of us and to the people of the city of Burlington. What we have shown is that after six years of being the only independent progressive government in the entire United States of America, that after six years, not only are we not getting weaker, we're getting stronger. And with that, with that responsibility of being a unique type of government in America, goes not only the obligation to continue to do the very best job that we can for the people of Burlington, and that goes without saying, and we're going to continue to do that, but equally important, we have got to be an example to the rest of the United States of America that a grassroots movement standing up, fighting for world peace, fighting for social justice, fighting for economic democracy, for the rights of all people, rather than just the very rich, is an idea that is as American as apple pie. <laughs> as Tom says, 
as Tom says, with Vermont apples. That's right. Okay? So I look forward in the next two years with your support and with the support of all of the people in our city to make these next two years the very best that we've ever had. And I thank all of you very much. Thank you. elections. Uh, we have, through the victory of Sharon Boucher, won a, another seat on the Board of Aldermen, and it's, I think as most people know, it is not easy to defeat an incumbent. And I congratulate Sharon and the people in Ward 1 uh, who worked so hard to bring that about. Terry Baricious won re-election in a very hard race. Uh, Tom Smith won election. Uh, and Mary Bentley did extremely well in Ward 5 and is going to be involved in a runoff election. And we're very proud of that. That's really quite a feat. I think of equal importance to me uh, from the Aldermanic and mayoral victory is the fact that we won and won decisively on every single ballot item that appeared before the people of Burlington yesterday. And in my view, uh, what that shows is that the people of Burlington have confidence in the future of their city. And it's one thing to vote for a candidate for election. You, know, you have two choices and you're going to vote for one. It is another thing to vote for six ballot items, including several money items, to raise your own taxes, because you believe in the city and the greatness of the city and in the future of the city. And obviously, as a result of those ballot item victories, it means that the school department is going to have the necessary funds so that we can adequately educate our kids. It means that we're going to be able to expand and improve our police department, something that I believe uh, is, is absolutely needed. Uh, it means that we're going to finally have the kinds of money that we need to create a people-oriented waterfront so that Burlington's extraordinarily beautiful waterfront will be open to all of our people uh, forever. Uh, it means that we are going to be able to provide property tax relief and a renter's rebate program to supplement the state program for the poorest people in our city. And in fact, as part of that ballot item, uh, come up with a major alternative, another alternative to the property tax, and that is, of course, the property transfer tax, one half of 1%. That issue is going to be brought down to Montpelier immediately, and we're going to do our very best to make certain that the people of Burlington who voted overwhelmingly for that item uh, get their way and, and not be rejected by the legislature. And lastly, we have passed the strongest condo conversion uh, bill in the state, uh, which will enable us to protect affordable housing in the city, and we're very proud of that. So I think overall, not only in a partisan political way was I gratified by yesterday's results, and I obviously was, uh, but also I think what it, what it confirmed to me is what I think many people believe, that the people of Burlington are proud of our city, they feel that we're moving in the right direction, uh, and they're willing to, in, in some instances, vote themselves higher taxes uh, in order to continue that effort. So it was obviously, from my point of view, an extraordinary night. Um, as I uh, said before the election, and as I repeat after the election, this is going to be uh, my last term as mayor of the city of Burlington. I am as proud as I can be and, and just grateful uh, and humble uh, for the mandate that we received yesterday from the people uh, to continue another two years. It's going to be an exciting two years. Uh, a lot of ideas in the back of our minds that we'll be talking about within the next few weeks um, I'm very optimistic about the future of the city, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to a great two years. Thank you. Bernie, if, if things, with this kind of mandate, I mean, considering that you feel as proud of, of everything as you're saying, why limit yourself now? Why say no more after these two years? Well, among other things, that's what I said before the election, and I think it's a good idea to keep one's word the day after as opposed to the day before. I said that I thought that eight years was ample time. And uh, I think it is. I really do. Eight years is a long time. What would you like to do? I mean, you're saying you, you bring that, but you're going to leave. Oh, I knew that you, after this election, people would not. I knew. I was waiting for Bob Knotts to be saying, what's the next election? I, I really, I knew that you weren't going to really ask that question, Peter, were you? 
Not that question. <laughs> but, uh, you know, go ahead. You know, we started the farm company in Downs, Rackland, and Martin. I mean, uh, would you see yourself leaving Burlington after two years? And no. This is my home, and I've lived here now for uh, 17 years. Right. So I will probably be a Burlington resident for the rest of my life. I think it's a little silly to speculate about what's going to happen in two years, right? We have a lot of work in front of us. It's going to be, I think, a fantastic two years. I'm really, obviously, with the victories yesterday in terms of all the manic representation, uh, and in terms of the, of the ballot items, it's really going to be an exciting two years. I mean, to be honest with you, if I had won and we had lost a few seats on the Board of Aldermen and we had lost some of the ballot items, uh, my enthusiasm would not be so great. But we're in good shape. And we're in good shape politically. I think we're in pretty good shape economically. Uh, and it's going to be a fun two years. But I think it's a little bit, a little bit early. Being that we've just decided the election last night, it might be a little bit early to be talking about political horizons and futures and so forth. Do you see any changes coming up here at City Hall in terms of either personnel or, you know, sometimes after a yeah. an administration yeah. is re, you know, elected? Yeah, or that's changes. right. Yeah, the answer is there's a real possibility for that, Bob. And, and I'm going to be going on vacation on Friday uh, doing some thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, there's not going to be any radical or wholesale uh, changes. Uh, but there may very well be some changes. What kind of things are you talking about? I mean, do you, can you give us some idea? Are there people talking of leaving, you know? Uh, no, there's not, no. Frank Oakleville and uh, Leopold? Mm, no, that we will not do. We think that those three will be here with us. But there may be some, some changes, uh, some areas that we want to revitalize. I think one of the dangers, very clearly, is that when you're in office for six years, you don't want to get into the habit of doing something because you did it last year that way and the year before. You really want to be vital. You want to uh, look to the future with excitement and, and, and a willingness to look at new ideas. Um, and you, you just don't want to do things out of habit. So I think occasionally it's necessary uh, to, to bring about little shakeups. It's not going to be the cultural revolution. We're not going to bring that about. Uh, but ben, uh, yeah. How, how important is this possible winning of a seventh seat on the Board of Aldermen to you? And do you think realistically in Ward 5 in this runoff that there's a, life, a good likelihood? Debbie, you'll forgive me. I really don't want to. That, we have time for that one. I think what I can tell, we, we're going to announce probably tomorrow a date for that election, and we'll, let, we'll discuss that as we will. Uh, Beside confidence in the city, what, what do you attribute uh, getting you know, 65, 68 percent on these ballot items? It's really quite incredible. Right. Every year there's something that everybody picks out that they vote no on. You're right. I mean, I hate to say it, but it almost sounds like uh, Carol Stewart was correct in her comment a couple of months back no. that people seem to be able to... No. All right, let me look at that. I, I'm glad you raised that issue. And I look at it differently. I think two things. I think people will not vote themselves tax increases and will not be willing to spend money in areas unless they had confidence that that money was going to be well spent. Unless you have confidence in the future. Quite honestly, what this tells me is that the people have confidence in the future of the city. Uh, and I was... I wouldn't tell you otherwise, amazed by the, the, uh, the depth of the victory. I mean, I thought we had a shot at these things, but uh, the scope of the victory was much greater than I had thought. The issue of the property tax and whether people can afford it, I want to tell you this. I mean, if there's a lesson that remains imprinted in my mind uh, out of this election, it's I knocked on, I don't know, maybe 1,500 doors. And the most painful part of the campaign was knocking on doors of elderly people and poor people who cannot afford higher and higher property taxes. So what I think you have here is there are numbers of people who can't afford higher property taxes, and I've never denied that. But there are many people who cannot. And there are some people who are willing to bite the bullet because they felt it important. But if anything, out of this campaign came my even stronger feeling about the stupidity of the property tax to fund education and municipal services. The fact that people finally were willing to do it doesn't mean to say that the tax is not a bad form a bad method of raising money for education and municipal services. And I just knocked on too many doors. The impact of reappraisal was just, you know, when you think about uh, the nature of this campaign and, and, and the things that I was running against, I think it's fair to say that certainly one of the hardest things that I was running against, and, and clearly what I was most frightened about, was the impact of reappraisal. I mean, you can explain to people over and over again, and I think they do believe what is in fact the truth. The city of Burlington did not receive one extra penny from reappraisal. If somebody's taxes went up, somebody else's taxes went down. And yet, it doesn't matter. If your taxes went up by 50 or 75 percent and you can't afford that, it doesn't matter what the mayor tells you. You're hurting. And a lot of people are hurting. And I uh, honestly, out of this has come almost, if you want, a reinvigoration on my part to do everything that I can to break our dependence on the property tax. 
I'll be down in Montpelier tomorrow starting that process uh, again this year, and uh, something has got to be done. On are you going to be speaking out any more on statewide issues now? Is this, are there going to be any change in, with regard to that? Now? Well, I think, Bob, during the election, I spent almost all of my time here in Burlington. I have been down to Montpelier on a number of occasions, uh, but I will certainly, as soon as I return, I'll be down in Montpelier tomorrow. We're going to fight for these charter changes. Okay, we are going to make certain in terms of the state aid to education s situation that not only the Burlington, but every community in the state of Vermont gets a fair shake. The foundation plan, I hope, I hope that the foundation is crumbling and we're certainly going to do everything we can to bury it. Um, and we're going to look for some progressive approaches to funding education. Once again, I have to say that in terms of Burlington and in terms of every city and town in the state of Vermont, the major issue that we have to deal with is the absurd and unfair relationship between state government and local government. Reading the paper today, you read various towns who have lost revenue sharing. And all of these communities all over the state, they're battling, what do they cut? How much do they raise property taxes in order to compensate for education, uh, compensate for the loss of revenue sharing? That is the major issue. The legislature is not dealing with it appropriately. And I think you know that the League of Cities and Towns and I uh, will be doing everything that we can to change that. Last night, in this concession, Lafayette, expressed the hope that you would take a serious look at the Burlington 2000 plan and try to implement something similar to that in your next two years. Um, do you want to make plans anything like that? Well, I think it's always a good idea to bring people together to look to the future and see how we go. I think we do that on an ongoing basis. Whether we would do it exactly that way, I don't know. But certainly, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Any other parts of his campaign that you see being appropriate to look at? We'll try to get more lighting out on the streets. Um, uh, no, not really. What about some of these ideas? You know, you said you were criticized in some quarters for running a campaign that was basically based on the record and right. really not presenting a, any vision for the future. Although you talked about a vision, you didn't really present a lot of specific ideas. Well, so what, can you give us some sense as to, you know, again today you said you're going to be bringing some you know, ideas. You know, it's forward. only in the city of Burlington that when you announce that you're expanding your police force, you're making major changes on the waterfront, you're coming up with significant alternative to the property tax, you're bringing forth the most significant condo conversion bill in the history of the state, that that is nothing. But are you taking personal credit for those? Is it no, I'm not taking personal credit for them. These are ideas that we strongly supported. There are going to be many. This, this but you yourself said there's a difference between supporting an idea and initiating an idea. Well, I would say that in every one of those that I just mentioned, those basically came from, uh, to a significant degree from this, well, the, the property tax one was a combination of the Democrats and us. There are other ideas that we're bringing forth, but I think what we have just passed right now in terms of the ballot items is very significant. And I think, you know, if you compare our agenda with whose agenda, uh, you know, uh, there's much more to be done. I mean, we've mentioned some ideas in terms of, say, uh, property tax relief for senior citizens beyond this, which we are working on. Uh, environmental uh, work, I think you're going to see some efforts, major efforts in terms of recycling. Um, you're going to see more work done on the bicycle path, not just expanding the bicycle path, but the idea of creating a network. Um, you're going to see our work continue in terms of state-city relationships. There's an enormous agenda in front of us, an enormous agenda. I don't know that today is the day to go into all of the details, but it uh, promises to be a very exciting two years. What do you, what do you see happening um, at this point with the waterfront? How is this going to be? I mean, what can you tell people in terms of when, how it's going to be implemented? Well, all right. The hope is that work will begin, begin as soon as possible. And we would like to see some real uh, visible uh, improvements, certainly by this summer. Now, obviously, as you know, the location of the community bow house is something that still has got to be explored. And that we're doing right now. Um, but certainly, as a result of the passage of this bond issue, people will see some very real, I won't use the word concrete, rather I use real grass changes. Uh, on the uh, waterfront in the near future. Well, I mean, is the bike path going to get started sure. this summer? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, you know, it is already started. I mean, what has to be resolved now is the area in the south end as to whether or not we go in front of Blodgett's. But yes, work will begin on that very shortly. Do you think that the bond will help it work out, help you work out some kind of an arrangement with the developer? I think that once we have gone as far as we will have gone in, in, in allowing the people of Burlington to understand that there's going to be a whole lot of public access, a community boathouse, a bike path, more parks. I think it makes it easier to begin the discussion with private developers. Yeah, I do think so. 
Uh, I think what people are concerned, were concerned about in the past is if you sit down with a private developer, is there going to be any public access? I think the answer is, especially after this bond issue, there is going to be. Um, and we're going to continue to get more public access after this. But I think it will make uh, discussions with developers easier. So are you going to initiate any? Are you going to call Paul Flynn and get him back in? That's not on the table right now. You know, just let that well, I think right now, right, that's right. We're in court right now, and that, I think we're going to have to resolve that issue. Any congratulatory phone calls for yeah. the governor? No, actually, I was su surprised. The governor did not go. I think the governor had a bad day yesterday. Thank God she didn't endorse me, I suppose. She uh, endorsed the Democrat in Rutland, who seemed to have gone down two to one. Um, Leahy? Yeah, I did get a call from Senator Leahy. I got a call from uh, the Attorney General. Howard Dean was at our gathering last night. What do you see about the future of the Democratic Party here locally? It seems they're down to, to potentially could have only one seat on yeah, the Yeah, I, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I think, um, you know, we did clearly very, very well. But I think the Democrats also did better than, than the results indicate, okay? And we shouldn't kid ourselves about that. Uh, they brought out 900 people to their caucus to start the process, which is an extraordinary effort. It really is. Uh, and as I mentioned yesterday, to say the very least, we were very, very nervous at the start of this campaign to know that they had brought out, you know, maybe 15 or 18 percent of what they needed to win the election on a given night for a meeting. Um, second of all, uh, you know, the truth is I think that they showed more organizational skill this time around than they did in the past. Okay, you know, the voter turnout was very large and not all of the new voters were our voters. They brought out a lot of people as well. Um, so but the bottom line is they could be down to one. Yeah, it's true. Some of us are not. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'd like to know, really push you on that a little more. I mean, I know that you hate to kick a party, a Democrat, when they're down, but <laughs> in public, what, what is going on here? I mean, Morris Mahoney last night had no explanation. I mean, they seem to have. I want to tell you something. I know it is not dramatic enough for you guys. I know you always need something new and something profound. But you know what I'm going to tell you. What I'm going to tell you is that the average Burlingtonian thinks that the city of Burlington today is being run very, very well. Okay? They're looking at the record, and I think what the average Burlingtonian is saying is it's a damn good record. We're proud of the alternatives to the property tax. We're proud of the changes in the, the infrastructure, our streets, sidewalks, sewers. We're proud that we're making progress on the waterfront. We're proud of the youth programs and the cultural programs and the women's programs. We have established a very good record. And after all is said and done, essentially what the campaign comes down to, any campaign comes down to, is an incumbent says, this is what I've done in the past. And these are my ideas for the future. And the challenger says, well, these are my ideas for the future. This is the crit critique of the, of the incumbent. That's really what it comes down to. And I think if you scratch beneath the surface, surface and you go beyond the small numbers of people who have hated us from the day that we're in here and will hate us to the last day, that we're in here. If you go beyond those small numbers of people, the average Burlingtonian thinks that we're doing a good job and that our vision is consistent with their vision. That's really what it comes down to. And people, I think, want to see us continue that direction. And we have all the manic candidates who are, I think, if you look at the old manic candidates on their own, they're really a very good group of people, very bright, very energetic, without exception, ran tremendous campaigns, knocked on every door in their wards. Uh, they have indicated that they want to continue the, the progressive uh, direction of the city, and that's why they won Debbie. It really is not more complicated than that. I think people are proud of where we're going. They want to continue that effort. They want to support a mayor and all the Manic supporters who are going in that direction. And uh, that's about it. It's really not more complicated. Do you think that, uh, that you have essentially supplanted in Burlington the Democrats as the sort of the second party power, the second power? I wouldn't phrase it that way. I mean, I won't repeat. I mean, I think, I think people like what they're seeing. That's about it. They like the direction of, of city government right now, and I think the majority of them said, why should we change that direction? Why don't we continue going in that direction? Has your political organization progressed to the point that it is a machine? I mean, the, the, the 
quote last night uh, from Morris Mahoney was that uh, you guys had quite a machine. Yeah, well, I think Morris has been making that same quote and that same word for the last five years. Well, I, know I know theirs is a grassroots citizen movement, and ours is a political machine. Well, but, you know, there was, a, there was the pocket machine for 10 years, right? Is there a Sanders machine now? No, I think, it, but let me answer it this way and say this, that in truth, I think that the work done by our volunteers, and I have to tell you, at this point, we have not paid one penny to any campaign worker up until this point. It's been an all-volunteer effort. That the effort of yesterday was far and away the most intensive and, and best effort that we have ever made, and that's certainly an important part of why we won yesterday. We had volunteers out knocking on doors all over the city, uh, making God knows how many telephone calls, doing an extraordinary effort. I think, you know, when people want to criticize you, they call it a machine, uh, but I think if you look at it objectively, what you had is a grassroots movement of people who are proud of what we've accomplished and want it to continue for another two years. Uh, but again, to use that, that word, Morris literally has been using that same word. I think you'll check your records for the last five or six years. Do yeah. you see any difficulty uh, with the fact that you have signaled that this will be your last term getting anything done? No, I don't think so. Uh, why? I mean, why should it make it different than it was in the past? We have. Uh, yet people know you'll be gone in two years. What? Oh. Okay. I think. No. I mean, I think basically the way we have worked in the past and will continue to work is we bring forth an idea, and if the idea makes sense, we're going to try to rally public support for that idea. And I think uh, that will be the case. I, I think, you know, if the idea makes sense and there's public support for it. Why should it be defeated? And, and if people want to oppose it just for you know, the sake of political partisanship, we'll deal with that when it comes up. But I honestly don't believe uh, that the policies will be uh, treated differently because I'm in my last term. How do you explain it to yourself when you look at what happened last November in Burlington? You got 15% of the vote. A lot of those people that, that went to the polls in November and checked CUNIN turned out a lot of them and checked Bernie Sanders this time. Got 22% of the vote. 22? That's good? Mm -hmm. Burlington, yeah. 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 Well, okay, 22 to 55. Right. Right. I think the answer is not a hard answer. I think often when people go to the ballot box, they say, do I feel comfortable that the governor has been doing a job that I can support? And apparently 55% of the people said, yeah, I do. I don't want to change governors. I think yesterday people went to the polling booth and they said, has the mayor been doing a job uh, that we want to support? And they said yes. And I think that's really what it's about. I mean, I think, for example, if Governor Cunin were running against me as mayor, you would see very different results than me running against Governor Cunin as for governor. How do you explain the word one win? Well, we ended up with more votes than them, Mark. That's the major. But why did you end up with more votes? Um, I mean, you were running against an incumbent. You're right. Uh, and that was, we were cautiously optimistic that we had a shot there. Uh, Sharon is a very good candidate. She worked very hard. Uh, and I think if you look at the Ward 1 movement that we have there has historically been a very strong one. Erhard Manka and the people in Ward 1 did a fantastic job yesterday. You know, I won well there. There's support for the progressive uh, agenda there in Ward 1. And uh, Sharon won. Did you student vote? I think there was. I, don't, I honestly haven't seen the results. But, there was a, but you know, I think if you look at the turnout, though, uh, compared to two years ago, it was not a significantly higher turnout in Ward 1 would not be telling you the truth that we did not want to see a significantly higher turnout, but it wasn't. I think it was 100 more, is that correct? Okay, which is not extraordinary, really. Do you, do you see this uh, victory, I mean, it's a fairly large one. Do you see it as a message of Sanders do what you want? No, not, not Sanders do what you want, but what I see it is as a mandate uh, in this, uh, of an indication that the people of Burlington are supporting the direction that we have taken the city in in the last six years. Um, and I think a, a belief that that is the direction that we should go in the future. It doesn't mean suddenly Sanders do what you want, but it does say remain consistent. Stand up and make the fights that have to be made. Continue to lead the city in a direction which benefits all of our people uh, and continue to talk out on those issues that you've talked out on. So uh, we see it as a mandate essentially to continue where we have been going uh, and we'll certainly continue to do that. Mayor, of the ballot items, was there anything that surprised you the most? I mean, traditionally, it seems that there's the housing kind of initiatives have had a hard time, and I was the condo thing. Yeah. Well, I, I would say that of all of the items on the ballot, we had most doubts about the school tax. Uh, I thought that there was a reasonable chance the school tax would go down. If it won, I thought it would be in the low 50s, getting 
close to 58 percent was more than I thought. Uh, it is hard getting two-thirds of the vote for anything. We were certain that the waterfront bond issue was going to pass 50 percent, no question about that. But that it ended up with 73 percent of the vote is fantastic. Uh, the property tax relief for 68 percent is a very, very high vote. So it's, uh, I guess all that I can say, Debbie, is the, um, we had our doubts about the school tax. Uh, and, and the magnitude of the support is really quite extraordinary and gratifying. Was that because they'd asked for one last year? Sure. Sure. I mean, you have reappraisal. You had a $1.7 million tax increase last year, a $1.1 million tax increase this year. Not everybody has children in the schools. Uh, and it did go down at Ward 4, it lost in Ward 4. Looking at it, do you think 55, where you are right now, that that's probably because of the people who will be against you for all of that, this is really probably uh, as good as you could realistically do? You take away the uglies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. roughly speaking. Yeah. How long are you going to go away for? Uh, probably a week. When are you? Barbados. Can we come? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we could do uh, satellite press conferences every day. What do you say? We'd be happy to do them. Do they have a, a socialist independent government? I think they do. <laughs> so when are you leaving? Friday. And I want to tell you also that you look back upon this year in terms of elections. It has been a very long year. As some of you may recall that we, last year, a year ago from today, we had all the manic elections, which we worked very, very hard on. It was important. I know some of you were predicting that we weren't going to do so well, right? But we did okay then. We had a special automatic election to maintain, to uh, win for Erhard Manka. We ran a gubernatorial race. We had another mayoral race. It has been a long year. And uh, I'm tired, so I'm going to enjoy the uh, week vacation. And this will just be a brief respite? A brief respite, and then we'll be back again. Okay? Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much.